Well, you've got to stop meeting like that. <laughs> I'm just kidding. We're going to, we're always going somewhere, right? I am in Westchester, New York, so you definitely feel that end of summer vibe. And this summer, I fell in love with being outside. Like this summer, I found out so much was going on. I was vitamin D deficient, and so I just tried to spend as much time outside as possible. And for someone who is like very much introvert, very much stayed in the house, all of a sudden I'm a nature girl. I'm outside. I like the smells of the grass, of the different flowers and blooms. I'm identifying them. I'm looking at mushrooms on the trees. Like there's so much going on, and it's gonna get really cold really quickly. So I'm really just trying to soap up the last of summer girl. So. I am taking myself on a cute little picnic date in the park, read with me vibes. I'm going, uh, I'm driving a little bit further than I usually would go. Like my park that I usually go to is close, but I went to this park one time and I did um, forest bathing. It was like the first time I did it. And the park was nice and it was like 45 minutes away, but definitely uh, worth the drive, definitely worth the vibe. So that's what I'm about to do. I have my little basket with me and we're going to, we're starting a new book. We're starting a new book. So I was reading, um, I finished The Lost Apothecary. Check out my reading blog for that one. And now it was, I don't know, I, I wound up giving it three and a half stars, wasn't crazy about it. So now I'm starting a new book. I bought three books with me because I don't know which book I want to start and I think once I get to the park and sit down and get settled it'll just come to me the one that I want to read I'm leaning towards nobody leaves Alaska oh I'm sorry it's called nobody gets out of Alaska I'm leaning towards that book because I just have a feeling that's gonna be good also I need to come up with new criteria for picking up books because <sighs> I've hoarded a lot of things in my day and now that I am getting into books I want to be proactive I have a tendency to hoard and just buy 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 I don't want to do that I want to be strategic I only want like physical copies of things in my home that I love anything else girl we can rent from the library we can buy second hand um, we can even do ebooks you can do ebooks for free through your library we're going to the library this week too so I need to come up with a better vetting process instead of like just reading the back, like reading one sentence off the back, vibing and thinking it's a go. No, cause I got a whole, I've got like three or four books right now that I need to get rid of because I didn't like. I'm wondering if I could donate to my local library. I'll ask them when I go. We're just gonna do a little read with me sash. I think it'll be fun. Oh gosh, I got so excited to just go outside and read. Okay, talk soon. Why does my heart tell? getting attacked by bugs now but in nature per peep is set up hold on how cute how cute is she how cute is she let me get set up so these are the book options <sighs> we have nobody gets out alive or the final support group the final girl support group or i have one more murder at the pta all from that last barnes and nobles home i really think i'm gonna read nobody gets out alive i just on the way over i was watching the lily reads books club and <laughs> kenya was talking about the books that she should have dnf and the final girl support group was on there so i'm like Ooh. i'm still gonna read it though but it's either gonna be murder at the pta or nobody gets out alive we'll see
That was fun. I think I got eaten alive <laughs> by the bugs, but that's what happens when you're out in nature. Okay, I'm so glad I brought more than one book because Nobody Gets Out of Alaska Alive was not giving. I read 53 pages of it and I don't know what the hell, I don't know what the hell is going on. I don't know why the hell things are happening. I've gotten two stories already. I'm they're just dragging on it's like written in like excruciatingly painful lengthy detail so we went into um the murder pta book but i'm 38 pages in and that book is giving like it was just the kind of messy pta mom housewife nonsense i thought it was gonna be and i'm intrigued like i'm into it so what happened was this is what happened so far there's this character her name is sandra i think sandra wallage or something she is just taking her her rightful place as like the pta president right so she's up on the podium she's giving her i'm the pta president speech now there is this site called dirty laundry it's giving like boring middle-aged woman gossip girl tease which is why i picked up the book and it is exactly that so sis sandra is giving her speech meanwhile a story comes out everybody's on their phone Ooh, alert alert what's going on the headline is her husband is involved with a sex scandal and used like taxpayer funds to pay off the individual and so Sandra just up there like dumbfounded like oh my gosh what's going on oh there's like 200 people in the audience they've all gotten this notification and are looking at their phone and like up looking at her while she's giving the speech so she's freaking out she's gotta go she's gotta leave she calls her husband her husband is like in DC or something he's like about to go live on CNN he's a senator and she's like uh babe like this story came out blah 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 he's like oh it's nonsense folly don't worry about it it'll be it'll be off the pages in like a second is fake news fake news right <laughs> then we also meet this other character I believe her name is Maya she is a private like detective investigator she's got a partner her partner is pregnant um, it is Meyer and her daughter. Her husband is in jail for committing some crimes. I don't think we know what he did yet, but he's in jail. He's been locked away for a while. But like this, this is just the kind of mess that I signed up for and it's giving. It's been an interesting first 38, I'll tell you that. And I'm so sorry nobody gets out of Alaska. You're on ice. Like I will give it that book is not that long i think it's like 275 pages i'm feeling right now like i want to dnf it i'm not even gonna hold you but i'm gonna give it a little bit more because i believe it my book is in the trunk but i believe there is eight different stories with eight different pov so it's gonna take a little bit to get into it to find a group i'll give it to page 100 i'll read another 50 pages i'll give it to page 100 and we'll see how we feel about it but if i'm if i'm still not feeling it after page 100 it's a dnf like i there's so many books there's so much life there's so much to read i don't have time to read things that i am not enjoying i simply do not um but if ever you get the opportunity go read in nature it's such a vibe like I just recorded myself reading I'm gonna have like a read with me situation I'm even gonna watch these back for myself like for sometimes like because you know the weather is about to change up here <gasps> 
the read with me and nature's as the foliage comes in is gonna be so camp it's gonna be so camp oh i'm so excited okay let me drive back let me try to avoid this um traffic -com. here we go Shout out to everybody who had this album. I had the Christina Aguilera album. I got it as Sam Goody Girl. I believe I turned to you as track three, if I remember correctly. Shout out to us. Who would have, look at us now. <laughs> look at us now, girlies. Who would have thought we would be here? Look at us. I can't believe it. I can't, I, I'm like visualizing myself. Listen, yo, I wore that CD down. I wore it out, girl, late night. I was supposed to be in bed, getting ready for school. Headphones all messed up in the CD player. One ear not working, fiddling with the wire, trying to get it to come through. And now we are grown. We are driving in our car back from reading in the park because it's what we wanted to do on this Monday. And we're listening to the song in our car. Look at us. Look at us. Just little me will be so happy and so proud. Oh, she, Brittany was telling us. Brittany was definitely telling us. Oh, girl, I love you. Okay. It's Friday morning. I don't remember when I started reading this book, but there's some things I'm noticing with this book. Little Miss Murder at the PTA. One is the descriptions of things, right? Like the way that the author goes out of their way to let us know who has money and who doesn't by the descriptions of like their homes and like the appliances and things. Like as they pulled up to the rusty house that was in desperate need of a paint job, the rust was chipping, right? Like all types of shit like that versus the well manicured lawns with lush green pastures. Like, okay, we get it. They're rich, they're poor. Like we need better ways of like, <laughs> of, like describing these things without this, these strange adjectives for how we describe like people's socioeconomic statuses, correct? Like it's, it's getting weird. So we find out that this book actually takes place in Maine and Maine at least seems to be a bit affected by like this opioid and suburbia situation going on. Now I remember I told you about Sandra. She is the wife, she's the politician's wife, she's got two boys. One of the boys' friend is, well we don't know what he's doing but Dirty Laundry breaks the secret that like he's on opioids, he's on drugs. This child's father is like really pissed obviously like you're spreading all of this crap about my son, he's having a hard time, he's trying to like get him situated, acclimated, whatever. Meanwhile, the principal of the school kind of tries to get Sandra to step down based on the story from Dirty Laundry. So there's also an assistant principal. And she seems to be secretly close with the principal, but we don't really know the nature of their relationship. The assistant principal winds up dead with like this strange confession note in which she confesses that she is the one who's been running the dirty laundry website. But it looks hella suspicious, right? Like remember I told you about Maya the detective? Maya's daughter had asked her to investigate and to look into the dirty laundry website because According to her daughter, like, you know, it's breaking people apart. People are angry. There's a lot of things going on. Like, mom, like, can you investigate this and take care of it? And so she does. She obliges her daughter. So she's coming up to the school to, like, talk to the assistant principal, knocks on the office. There's no answer. She opens the door. She is trigger warning. She is hanging from, like, her office, like, right? So it's looking like a suicide. But upon closer look, Maya goes and looks at her neck and is like, mm -mm, these, these are like strangulation marks. Like these don't come from, from like hanging. Like it looks like someone, you know, had like strangled her or whatever. So Miss Sandra, you know, she's always poking around. She ain't got nothing else to do. Her husband is off in DC doing God knows what with who knows what. So she's at the school running, like about to go to one of her PTA meetings and she sees Maya and so she's trying to make communication with Maya. It turns out her and Maya actually went to school together which is interesting. She comes and she sees the hanging body as well and so like she's freaked out, she screams, she calls the cops. Guess who shows up? It's our good, it's our good sexy detective Mateo, right? So Mateo comes, he's like what are you ladies doing here? Blah blah blah. Maya explains like she's a detective, like she's been hired you know, to look into what's going on, etc, etc. Another thing that I'm noticing about this is like the description. It's not just this author. A lot of authors do that in which they will 
go out of their way to describe their diverse characters in detail. So like Maya, for example, she has beautiful brown skin and dark, rich, curly hair. Like, okay, we get it. She is melanated. But what I do like about this is I find like a lot of authors will just say like the character is black or like melanated and give them no further character development like at least Maya has a story and so I am okay with that here. At this point where the assistant principal is dead we've got this fake allegedly fake you know suicide note I'm thinking okay it's really the principal right like the principal probably offs her or it could be Sandra's husband. I don't know. We've got this who's done it thing now introduced into the storyline. Also, interesting fact, the assistant principal's phone is missing. So that's suspicious within itself. The assistant principal's sister shows up, obviously. She's like the successful Broadway actress from New York. And she's just like, no, there's no way my sister would have killed herself. This is ridiculous. And so she hires Maya to investigate this case further. Maya, obviously she needs to Coin. she's struggling she's behind on her bills her partner Francis she is like eight months nine months pregnant about to pop any day now so she's not really active in the business right now so like Maya is really like Maya's really taking all of this on so she's super excited obviously to get this client and to get funds coming into the business you know so she starts doing her investigative bid and whatnot and Miss PTA mom Sandra she can't sit still she's got nothing else to do so she is just like She's really involved in this. She's like asking questions. She's trying to do her own investigations. And she remembers, remember I told y'all about her son's friend who was on drugs and everything and that the website like outed him. She had went and met with the father before. I think his name is Joel or something. And he was obviously very angry. I mean, who wouldn't be if it was their child? But he has said something like, oh, if I found out who was running um, this website, like I'll kill them myself. And so Sandra remembers this and she's like, oh shoot, like what if it was him who killed her? So she's trying to do her own investigative situation, right? So she goes back to the detective Mateo and she's like, hey, I think I have information about the case and what was going on because the case they like the police and everything like they just closed the case like nope it's a suicide we're done which is suspicious as well right why did Maya see something that they didn't see like about the strangulation and everything you know so that's suspicious in its own right but whatever also like I think a couple of days before the assistant principal went dead Sandra actually saw another woman like talking to her and they were in a heated discussion and I believe that woman was like strangling her or about to like had her her hands around her neck so she's like I have this information blah 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 the detective Mateo he's not interested he's just like scoffing at her like oh what are you like a bored politician senator's wife at home with nothing to do like please get out of here I have real work to do so then after that Sandra goes to Maya right she's like you know she has some kind of rapport with Maya like she knows her and she's like hey I want to team up with you about this Francis happens to be there as well Maya's partner and she's just like straight up laughing at her like ma'am please like get out of our face like this is ridiculous but Maya is actually interested in like talking to her and finding out more but they don't they don't really pursue it further at the moment do you know what I mean so then Sandra takes it upon herself to start doing her own investigation so like she goes back to Joel's house the father of the son um who was on drugs right and she's like asking all of these questions like oh where were you blah 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 she comes over with like a casserole to try to make it seem like oh this is just like a friendly check-in because they were kind of friendly before and things get awkward really quick like he misconstrues her concern for like being interested in him and like he like kisses her and like grabs her ass like shit gets fucking weird so then she continues to question him like they smooth that over he apologizes like oh I you know I miss her I you know I just thought like you know your husband was cheating and she's like yo how are you gonna believe the article like how are you gonna believe dirty laundry like aren't there aren't there salacious stories about you and your family on there but like you're believing that in my situation like shady boots right so he apologizes they smooth things over and so as Sandra keeps asking questions about like where he's been what has he been doing all of a sudden the sun the way they describe the sun is so funny do y'all remember those old school commercials where it's like this is your brain this is your brain on drugs and it's like you're just like sitting there like one with the couch not moving like that is how they describe the sun so he's been pretty much like non-verbal like <laughs> not present this whole time when Sandra starts to ask him the questions the sun pops up He's answering on behalf of his dad like oh no 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 you were here with me remember and remember I told you to go to your game and then you had 
um, some friends come over and watch me. Like all of a sudden he's talkative and he's got all these answers and he's got so much to say. So that in, it own, in its own right is suspicious as well. Anyways, Sandra like leaves because now it gets really awkward because the father can tell that like she's doing her own investigation, like pretty much like accusing him of murdering the assistant principal. Um, and so then she leaves and I think that's where, I think that's where I left off. Something that bothers me in this clip is as the father like makes this sexual advance towards her, immediately Sandra starts questioning herself like, oh man, was it me? Did I give him the wrong idea? Blah, blah, blah. Like in no world should someone just be like aggressively kissing you and grabbing your ass without any kind of conversation, any kind of prior thing. I hate us women like the first thing you do is like start to question yourself like oh gosh did I give him the wrong idea did I do something no he's a fucking creep like what no no you didn't I hate that where I'm at right now the story's kind of at a three and a half for me just because I'm a little annoyed by the the descriptions of certain things like and it is getting a little predictable for me I feel like the way this book gets to back to a four stars or at least four and a four stars are higher for me is like you really gotta wow me with like the who done it aspect like who who did what in the book is it gonna be somebody that I didn't know didn't expect at all like we'll keep reading I don't know if I'm gonna get back to uh nobody gets out of Alaska just because like I just wasn't moved by it it was like boring but we'll see we'll see <sighs> boy okay I'm on page 79 now i just did a little read with me situation so check it out it's nice i kind of like watching read with me's when i'm trying to get into a groove and read a book that i'm not that interested in but i need a little motivation a little assistance it's really dope i'm dnfing this book this is my first dnf on this channel so far i'm dnfing it because it's really hard for me to get into this groove i said i was going to give it to page 100 but as i just read the third short story in here it's not gonna work for me and i don't want to give it a bad rating because i can tell it's not my vibe right so i'm just gonna dnf it it is i believe there's eight short stories in here and they're all taking place in alaska and the common the common theme is like nobody leaves this place right different people different walks of life but for whatever reason nobody leaves alaska there's something that bounds them there that keeps them there this third story was the most interesting to me so far out of the three but i'm having a hard time connecting to the characters in this short window because it seems like all the stories just kind of start somewhere like you know like if you ever are like watching tv and you just jump into a show or like a movie and a good amount of it has passed and you're not able to kind of pick up what's going on and jump in and be involved. That's how I feel about these stories. I feel like I'm just thrown into them. I'm not following, I can't make a connection. It's moving so fast because it's a short story and obviously it's meant to like get you in right away, but I'm just not making the connections with it. I'm not enjoying it. Funny thing is too, I wanna go to Alaska. <laughs> <laughs> I've always wanted to go visit Alaska and this book is turning me off from it. I'm not going to get rid of this book. I'm not going to unhaul it. I'm going to hold on to it. I think I may enjoy it better after visiting Alaska. Maybe having some kind of real world um, things to relate to. Maybe I will enjoy it a little bit more. So I'm going to keep this in my library but it's a DNF for now. It's a see you later. If you finished this book, let me know your experience. Did you love it? Like this book has pretty good reviews. I think it's sitting at like 3.9 on Goodreads. I think Amazon has like four and a half stars. So people love it. It's just not for me and that's okay. Okay, we finished this book, Murder at the PCA. I had such high hopes for this book, but this book is like remember when we were younger and we would go to the supermarkets with our parents and you know when you got to the checkout line and it was like all the tabloids and everything like that it's like if whoever put those out made a novel fusion hard with a lifetime movie but not any lifetime movie think back circa 2010 it's a Saturday afternoon. It's a rainy Saturday afternoon, so you're home. You've got nothing to do. 
um, it's the one o'clock feature, right, on Lifetime. You look at it, you read the little description, you think it's going to be a good time, you watch it. For the first half hour, you're really enthralled. You're in. It's fun. It's exciting. You're thinking, oh yes, I've got a good one. This is going to be great. You go get snacks, you come back, you continue watching the show. And after the half hour mark, you realize that this is, like, it just declines, 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 declines. Like, next thing you know, it's two hours later and you've wasted two hours of your Saturday. You could have did something else. You could have went to the mall. You could have been on the phone with your friend. You could have done a lot of different things, but you've dedicated two hours to this shitty ass show. I'm so sorry. This is murder at the PTA. Okay, that's what this is. It started all so well for me. You saw me in the first 38 pages. I was excited. It was fun. It was great. As I kept going on, it just got wessa and wessa. <laughs> and there's another story that is supposed to break that is centered around a coach, but doesn't because of reasons, if you bother to read this book. This story started off so well for me, right? Like I was really excited, I was really into it, but then it got really weird. My main gripe with this story is the manner in which they describe the characters and their socioeconomic statuses, right? Like the language is, just, I'm so sorry about it, it's just shitty. And part of me doesn't understand, like, is it my fault from expecting more from this? Because I feel like I got this at Barnes and Nobles during the Barnes and Noble uh, haul. <sighs> the sad thing about it is I picked up this book because I picked up a bunch of new books and I wanted something that I knew I would enjoy in case everything else was a bust. And sadly, this did not meet my expectations. But honestly, I don't know if that's on me. Like I told y'all before, like I'm just now getting back into reading. Like when I used to read, it was the Scholastic Book Fair and that was it, right? So I'm just kind of getting back into this. I'm finding my footing, I'm finding my way. And so I don't wanna be too harsh on this because I don't know if it's like, I should have expected this. Or like, did I go in with too high of expectations? Like if you read this book, please let me know. But the language that they use to describe it, particularly the African-American characters, like it just, it grinds my gears. And I don't think it's specific to this book. Like I've read similar things in other books and obviously I see it in media as well. Inclusion without real character development does not denote representation okay like throwing in a black character and saying that she has on african print i'm so sorry about it you are not moving the needle on diversity and inclusion including gay characters with no character development i'm so sorry about it you are not moving the needle on diversity and inclusion we can find ways to describe these characters and their backgrounds without resorting to stereotypical language or i'm sorry like language that just doesn't describe the actual the actual statuses of these families like it's just I don't know I just found it really fucking irritating I've got to be honest with you the funny thing is this author in the back the author is Lee Hollis right and it's the pen name for Rick Coop he's a veteran Hollywood screenwriter it says he's written for the Golden Girls Wings, Scooby-Doo, Teen Titans, Barbershop now granted a lot of these are like older shows in which Let's be honest, in a lot of these older shows, like diversity and inclusion was not a thing and it was just perpetuating stereotypes, you know? But I'm not giving authors points for diversity and inclusion by just like th sprinkling in a gay character with no development. It's not gonna work for me. Sprinkling in black characters with no character development and just assigning them stereotypical black characteristics is not gonna work for me. I'm docking points, bitch. Like, I am. I don't care. I don't care if this was a cheap. $7.99 Barnes and Nobles haul like we have I feel like we have to call authors we have to call screenwriters we have to call people out to get the kind of to get the kind of content that we actually want to see it doesn't make me happy when I'm reading a book and it's like you describe a black assistant as like a lowly assistant what makes her lowly just the fact that she's black it doesn't make me happy when you make one of the characters gay and you don't expand upon that like is this character, what else is there to this character? Okay, he's gay, great, but what else does he have? Like, you go through all of these details to explain your 
white main characters. We know so much about them. And it's like, you just have like these B-roll side diverse characters that you don't bother to develop. And it's like, I'm not giving you points for that. I'm not. I'm just fucking not. There's more to people than physical characteristics, you know? We also have Maya pining after Sandra's life. Like Maya, she's not doing in the best financially. Like her husband went away to jail, right? Like she's struggling, she's got a daughter. Like that's to be expected. But the manner in which she's pining after Sandra's life just because Sandra has money, like it's just, it's just so annoying. I will say, for the who done it, I wasn't necessarily surprised about it, but it did have an additional aspect to it that I wasn't expecting. So I guess I can allow half a point there. It also did have some interesting subplots as well as we're trying to go through like the whole who did it situation. But yeah, this is getting two and a half stars for me. Um, it was really rough finishing it. Somewhere around the 200 page mark, I kind of wanted to DNF it because I saw where it was going and I was like, oh, I don't know that I'm going to enjoy the rest of it. And to be honest with you, I probably should have. This book had 314 pages. <sighs> but, you know, we live and we learn. Another thing that annoyed me about this, this book was the repetitive language. Like, this author should pick up a thesaurus. They use the word, hold on, what was the word? They use the word brusquely like 50, 11 times. <laughs> <laughs> it just really annoyed me. It was that word stood out to me, but there were other words too that they just kept reusing, reusing. It was just so repetitive. I don't want to drag this book for filth because honestly, I feel like I have to take some accountability here as well. I need to, I'm finding as I start to pick reading back up, I need to develop a better criteria for when I'm going to buy books. Perhaps if I rented this, I wouldn't have been so mad, but like I paid money for this. Like I paid $8 too much. It was $7.99. I paid $7.99 too much. Like this should have been a rental. And I've just come off of like a big purging and like embracing, not necessarily minimalism, but embracing just having things that are of quality to me that I love. And this doesn't make the cut. So like I will take some responsibility here as well. I need to develop a better vetting criteria for books that I'm going to purchase with my own money. But the fact remains that this was a pretty poorly written book. Like, I'm sorry. And honestly, I was offended. I was offended by the descriptions of the black characters. I was offended by the making a gay character but not giving them any character development. Like I just... It turned me off. It, I, I didn't like it. If you read the book, I am very curious to know your thoughts, your feedback. Am I bugging? Am I overreacting? Should I, should I have expected this? Let me know. Yeah, so that's it for me. I'm literally booked and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.